Before this video starts, there's this piece of bunk on the uh, windshield wiper. It's supposed to deflect wind. It looks disgusting and it needs to come off. The screws are destroyed. So Calvin thinks he's gonna, I, oh this is so sketch. Nice Mimi, Stanny. That is so disgusting. You repaint it. I'll repaint it orange. So in today's video, we're gonna be installing a wideband O2 sensor. And you're probably thinking, where is it? Danny, you usually show it. I don't have it yet. I bought it off someone from Throttle. And the guys from Throttle are bringing it to me. It is an AEM wideband O2 sensor. And this is the first video in the turbo kit series for the Mazda Miata. We need a wideband and able to see what the AFRs are for when we tune the car, making sure everything is not too rich or too lean. So that's gonna be our first video. The guys from Throttle, Evan and Mickey are coming down and they're gonna help me out slash. We're gonna tackle some other issues. But yeah, coming. I don't know if I can explain No, what explain, this is. explain that. We're gonna find some vacuum leaks. All so right. We're gonna just wrap it. So you'll see this little contraption. This is a nice cigar. <laughs> You're smoking, your car's gonna smoke at $13 a yeah, You gotta put one on, see look. Oh, dude, that's sexy. Isn't that sexy? <laughs> see, look, this is that's a clean so install, look. That's see, so that, nice. that is, that's cleaner. All right, homemade vacuum system, take one. <laughs> Glove on the throttle body with the tape on there. Line going up to the cheek. Got a leak. Our little cigar test didn't show up anything, but Mickey over here, you guys know Mickey from a previous video, the bearded, the bearded god. He was looking at some threads last night on the Mazda MX-5 threads. Yep. Yep. And uh, he thinks it's the idle control valve. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe. Let's not say I think that. Oh. It has been a problem for other people. Okay. But the the problem you're having seems to be a very common problem with this this year uh, or a couple years of uh, Miatas. So okay. we're gonna chase a couple things. All right, see if we can find All right sounds good, but we're starting with this one? We're gonna start with the LR control valve and see if it's gunked up or needs to be uh -huh. replaced. It, on the outside it looks pretty shitty, but mm -hmm. the outside doesn't mean anything. Yeah, true. What's going on on the inside, so. We'll get the same still, I'll be driving the car that set up right on driving the like, Yeah. 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 I'll be there for that. Like this weird color? Uh-huh. It has to be something weird. What? <laughs> oh, get it all over. It's so messy. It doesn't look just, too bad trying, in there. No, it doesn't look bad. We're just trying to get any kind of gunk or grime out of there. Oh, brother. <laughs> I already turboed. For real? You just yeah. you just take That's, out the I idle see. control valve just and and it? you spray it with brake cleaner and then it's turboed. Oh, nice meme. You were That's you actually nice. thought it was turboed. I was like, what do you think excited. we did that in 20 minutes? You guys would be on the wrong hey, side. Man, I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So I feel infinitely less of a man riding around in this car. What? Yeah, sorry. What about when it's turboed? Yeah, then it's a different story. All right, cool. Right now we're gonna go over the issue I have with the idle. It's when I push in the clutch after I start going, so let's see if it'll happen. And it's not every time. Nope, didn't happen there. So I didn't show up, but we were in the car and it actually kind of fixed. What we did with the auto control valve, we cleaned it out. It actually kind of fixed a little bit. It happened a lot less frequently, which was good because obviously it doesn't happen as much. And when it did happen, it only went down to like 500 RPMs instead of like 200, which is kind of sketchy, but it still did shake a tiny bit. So we got the car up here on the lift and we're just checking out other things. I have like a little minor, weird noise coming out of the left wheel. We think it might be a wheel bearing, possibly. But uh, that is definitely cracked. Upper ball joint. Nice. Upper ball joint cracked. Here, yeah, let's get the <laughs> It's just the boot is split, but all the grease comes out of there and then yeah. it gets noisy. So the plan today was to do the wideband AFR gauge. Um, but I don't think that's an option considering we don't have a new ECU because the old ECU will not read the narrow band output that the, that it requires so we have to wait that's rattle like I said that's the heat shield uh, so you get the downpipe that'll all go away where will the so I have a downpipe that'll go to like right here and then I have a mid pipe that'll yeah, go to right here probably at, it's probably gonna go at the catalytic converter so I 
I need a. Oh wait, is this the cat? This is. This is a cat. So I need one that's. Yeah. So we could just do a straight pipe all the way back. Good. Yeah. With a bend right there. Nah. Is this gonna actually be powered on today, or we're we just routing everything? It could power it. All right, so we might be doing this. Gonna read the air fuel today. Get everything where it's supposed to be, so when we get the actual kit, we can just plug it in super quick. We're just running stuff right now. It's kind of boring. Wires on wires on wires. Later on, we'll be purchasing a lot of things that I might or might not show you guys, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Depending if you guys have been good. You probably have not because I get hate comments all day. So the soft top doesn't go down, so I'll do that. Coors Light. Yeah. What about it? You like drinking Coors Light? I mean, it's what's really TJ loves it. I'm gonna film this now. It's kind of dark outside now, but um, we did get power to it. We got power to the uh, AFR gauge, which is also a wide band, but we didn't hit, hook up the wide band portion of it right now because we don't have the ECU to run it. I'm gonna get the Mega Squirt soon, and then we're gonna actually hook it up, but I'm gonna catch you guys tomorrow because I gotta give this car back now. Actually, I'm at LA Fitness, but I'm gonna go work out, and then I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Now, what we did today wasn't super exciting for the turbo kit, but it had to be done. It's, it's an absolute necessity for what we're gonna be doing later so get excited the first thing happened and it looks like other things might be happening a little sooner than I thought hint hint like I said in the video I'm 95% certain I ordered everything I need for the turbo kit last night so <laughs> the drilling in the oil pan section seems really sketch to me still I mean I've been watching videos over and over again to see exactly how it's done but it's just something like if you mess up on it can you go back? No, no, you can't go back. You can buy a new oil pan and do a ton more work. So that's kind of sketchy. The guys from Throttle are trying to get me to weld it in, um, get it welded in instead of just tap it in with some thread sealer and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly certain what I'm gonna do for that right now, but you guys will see it in the future. Definitely get excited because this is happening, like I've said multiple times, but like it's getting more legit every video I make because now like I had, I had about, to be money wise, I had about 30% of the materials, right? With the actual downpipe intercooler, all that stuff. Now, money wise, I've spent, uh, I'm gonna go over how much I spent on everything after the turbo kit's in. I've been recording everything, and I, there's a reason why I haven't said it, because I, guys, I want you guys to watch that video and it's telling you guys how much I actually spent on all of this and how much you can expect to spend on your Turbo Miata build. I'll tell you one thing, it's not expensive for what you're doing to the car, but it's still a good chunk of money. Don't think it's not going to be a good chunk of money. It's, I'll tell you one thing, it's more expensive than I bought the car for, which is kind of crazy when you think about it like that. But at the same time, I didn't buy the car for that much, so. <laughs> Last thing I wanted to share with you guys is this month's tuner crate. I'm gonna go over it a little bit more in, a, in the next video you guys see on Monday, but I'm just gonna give it a tiny shout out because I'm super pumped for it. This month, they have a shirt, a long sleeve, and a hat. That is so freaking tight, all for under $40 when you use my code at checkout, Decourt. It's a crazy good price. Like, I don't get it how they do it, to be honest. But everyone, that it will be the video. Thank you so much for watching. Turbo Build Series video part one, or video one, is this is it. You guys are seeing it. So like I've said a million times, get excited. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, like the video. If you didn't like the video, like the video. If you want to comment, go for it. And please subscribe, turn on those notifications, do all that good stuff. Keep watching me. Thank you guys. I ain't got no problem spending all of my money.